Hello, welcome everybody. Kamala Mingu Nomvuyo and I'm back making content. So, this video to my new and old people is for you guys to hear my story on how I got to do braiding after or well, during my journey of architecture. So I went from studying architecture, completed the degree and I ended up doing it. <laughs> so I'm a coconut mungkulu. I'm probably like, what in the world is wrong with this child? How can you study a prestigious degree and end up doing people's hair? Have a seat. Let's talk about it. Um, I'm doing this because everyone has a story. Every brand have a, a, a every brand has a story, and this is mine. So take what you may from it, but this is my experience. I started studying architecture in 2015. I went into it because I wanted half science, half arts, because I've always been an artsy kind of person. I always used to like creating, with its painting, with its drawing, with its singing. Uh, I did drama in school, uh, I did choir, I did piano, you know? I was never a sporty person and I was kind of okay in the books. Uh, at some point I was really good at school and then it just... So, me going into architecture, I needed a half and half in something that my parents would look at and be proud of, right? Um, and I got in. It was a very gruesome process <laughs> getting in. That's a story for another day. I took five years to finish the degree because I was scraping through finishing. I struggled finishing that degree because it was not me. It was not my passion. And I discovered that in the second year. Um, but as usual, um, you know, you're going to university thinking you're going to do what you studied and that is the plan and that is what you have to seek is to finish financial security is important and blah blah blah, blah. which is not a, a bad narrative um, but it's also not the only narrative that black people and young people have so started in 2015 first year was fine second year was getting worse i was like i don't know if i want to be here but i wanted to finish you know I wanted to have the title of architect, you know, I can make my parents proud, my grandmother proud. Like I, I finished it because a lot was sacrificed to getting me into university. And second year I got a bursary. Um, so of course I had to finish and work and you know graduate. So I was gonna scrape through no matter what. Third year happened, everything just felt like it was downhill. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can do this any longer. Two weeks before my exam, I wanted to drop out because I was still at the conceptual stage of my design. So when you are examined for architecture in your final year especially, you pin up all your year's work and you are examined verbally by different external examiners for about 30 minutes or so. And all your theory and your design must come together to form one solid argument. Me now, yeah, I went into my exam, two weeks before my exam, I was still at the conceptual stage and you should be finalizing everything by then. So you can imagine the stress Mina, yeah, I took my forms, I went to go to my lectures, I'm like, I'm dropping out, I'll come back next year because I was stressed. This is after I called crying my, to my parents that I don't want to be here, please let me drop out and come back next year. And they let, it, they let me do that or want to do that, but my lecturers actually convinced me, don't do it, you'll pass, like, just, just hang in there. So I did it, I, I, I didn't sign the forms to drop out design I instead dropped some modules and already I was coming back next year because I failed two of them anyway so you can imagine what kind of scraping was happening um, two weeks before my exam by God's grace a friend of mine called Lemo was scrolling uh, like going around the studio looking at people's work asking them what they do and all that stuff came to my table I showed him he saw how far behind I was and for those two weeks he helped me for nothing literally he was helping me for every second day coming to studio staying late nights helping me finish but that was a miracle from god honestly um and secondly five minutes before my exam eh, this two weeks have passed i'm about to go into my final exam five minutes before i have a panic attack why because i haven't printed i haven't dressed i haven't brushed my teeth i haven't slept i haven't ate i haven't combed my hair i haven't changed i haven't done nothing i look like a mess so you can imagine, I'm thinking, this is gonna, this is not happening. I just need to go home and quit. I had an anxiety attack and I was convinced, okay, now just go and do it, pin up, do your work. So I went, I got examined, it was a mess. But by God's grace, I passed. I mean, that was 
crazy for me, man. Like, I didn't think I was going to pass, to be honest. I was expecting to fail. So I passed my design exam and I was expecting I'm just going to come back for the smaller theory modules next year, four of them. Next year comes, I fall pregnant. And so you can imagine a young person just finishing their third year, it feels like your world is ending. But on top of that, there's pressure from all different sides to like, yo, why have you done this with your life? You are disappointing us. We worked so hard to raise you. You know, our family will come together and tell you all these things. And they, they, they should be disappointed. But at the same time, um, it's not us who's in control. It's God, ultimately. And that baby was my gift, honestly. But that's not what the story is about. Um, fourth year comes, right? And I'm doing my theory. I finished three, but I failed one. The reason why I failed one is because <laughs> so my chancellor's exam i decided uh once i uh, so in my chancellor's exam january 2019 i was studying preparing for it but very underprepared not ready and i got an invite that week right before my exam to to come to a jungle stone hair launch I'm like, no, don't do it, don't do it. Just focus on your exam, and I'm like, ah, oh, but you know you're gonna go. Me being me, I went. After my mom said, don't go, I went. I'm like, I'm just gonna go for an hour, then I'm gonna go, because the event was in the morning, the exam was in the evening, afternoon. So I went, underprepared for the exam. I don't regret meeting Bob Chabustone, because he is a legend. But you can see my priorities here when it came to that last exam. I was not having this architecture thing, but, Sure, I took grace for granted the end of the exam, hey, to be honest. But anyway, I went to go write it, get my results back, I failed. That was my last chance exam, because it was either that or I repeat again another year to finish the module. Get my results, I failed. My bursary calls me around about that week to say, hey, please come submit your results. And I'm here like, yo, I failed. What am I going to tell them now? Because I'm still not working for them. They might want me to pay back all that money. They might want me to APC. I'm like, so scared. So I pray in the morning. I'm like, Lord, please help me. I was so devastated. What am I going to tell them? And <clears throat> they, I go submit my results and give me forms to sign, which is a normal thing. But this time, the forms were not the same as every other year. It, I told them that I failed and they said, it's fine. Um, by the way, these are forms just to let you know that. In the event that you graduate and we can't place you in our company because of lack of funds you are free to go yes i was released from the bursary let's rewind to five years back five years back which was well, four years back which was 2015 when i started university i used to experiment a lot of hair colors i came into university wanting the university experience like woo, party wild away from home and i wanted to be expressive and colorful and don't do and whatever and i was that so i used to do fun funky yarn locks yarn twists colorful hairstyles and many people liked it other people thought i looked like a druggie they would say that somebody even saw it me in the train but i was that girl so a lot of people were asking me where did you do your hair and I'm like, no, it's me, I did it, you know, I learned on YouTube and at the time it was a big trend and not a lot of people knew how to do that hair. So there was a demand starting out then in 2015. Secondly, I needed pocket money. My dad told me I'm not giving you pocket money. The only thing I'm giving you is money for stationery, money for going home and we're going to give you groceries. Anything else is your problem, problem, <laughs> problem, anything else is your problem to sort out. Number three, my friends started convincing me, come on dude, do people's hair, you know how to do it, like why don't you do it? I'm like, ah oh, guys, I don't want to interact with people. So I started, worked on weekends, made quite a lot of money. First year was done, I was working. Second year, I was working. Third year, I took a break because third year is really, really hard. <laughs> I took a break and my plan was to stop, my plan was to stop braiding completely because, you know, I'm going into architecture, Blah, 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 blah. But when I failed, it was like, hey, finish school first. 
um, but still in the back of my mind, I was planning what I'm going to do with the money that I'm going to earn. I had no idea what I was going to do. Yes, I had no passion to go into architecture, but I was going to do it because I needed to make money, right? And to support myself and my daughter. And thankfully, her dad was the one who, who is more financially stable than me. So I, there was no direct pressure for me to be a financial provider. I just spent a lot of time with her. So I spent a lot of time with my daughter. Um, for two years, I was, I've been with her. Um, my mom helping me out as well, my grandmother. So there was no like direct pressure to, to make money immediately, but my parents started questioning me, dude, what are you doing with your life? You know, what's happening? I'm like, I actually don't know. In my mind, I'm like, what am I going to tell them? I don't want to go into architecture. What am I going to tell them? Um, my mom got frustrated. She applied for a job for me. <laughs> she applied for a job for me, called the guys to interview me. At her friend's firm, or friend, brother's firm, brother's friend's firm, and they interviewed me. And they said they called back, but they didn't call back. And I was just like, oh, thank you, Jesus. And so, still, there was no plan. What am I going to do with my life? Am I going to go into braiding full time, or am I just going to go look for a job? So, I was already braiding then just for money, right? Um, but what I did was I asked the folks at my Bible study just to help me out like guys what should I do because everyone there was working and you know kind of mature and me and two other friends were confused about our lives like what are we going to do so we asked them to pray for us and to get God's wisdom and counsel and just guidance in terms of where we should go and I didn't get like a light bulb like oh this is what I should do but um, which is maybe what a lot of us want when we pray and ask for the wisdom of, from God. Which sometimes He does, um, but sometimes it's a little more practical than you think. Uh, so I started to consider registering the business. So I did that. And then slowly but surely, I started to braid again, increasing clients because I still had to make money somehow, right? And thank the Lord, uh, I live with my parents, so I'm taking care of it in terms of shelter and food, you know. So, in that process, I didn't have a vision for Braids by Wheel, right. I have, I've, I've had a love of natural hair for a long time. I went natural in high school. But I never thought it could be something that I could make a living out of. I never thought it could be uh, anything other than what it was, a hobby. Um, but God has given me the gift or the talent and the passion for it. So through that process, I, I just worked through it, you know, without a vision though, without like any sort of ideas to what am I going to, where am I taking this? So I just continued. This was 2019. Now, fast forward 2020 January, one of my amazing clients, Lisa Lee, she usually does her forelocks in the States. And um, she, her American braider came, her name is Ash Nicole, here by Ash Nicole, check her out guys, she's amazing. She, uh, she invited me to come watch her braider, braid her, do full locks on her. And I kid you not guys, that one session changed the game for how I braid. I got to watch, I got the privilege to watch her braid for free. Where in the States you pay hundreds of dollars for those lessons. So here is the Lord making a way for me. I asked and step by step, he's just been making a way for me. And I, and I learned those two techniques or whatever and they changed the game for me. They are why I break the way I, I, I do now. I was good before, but I became better. So thank you, Lisa, for that opportunity. Um, and secondly, I just applied what I learned and I just, you know, went, just went along with it. January, February, the most I ever thought I would bring people in the month is 15, like on a normal month. I'm like, okay, if I can get to 15, I'll be happy, right? So you can see how like, average my levels, my goals were. Then I thought, you know, maybe one day you could bring 30 people, like one people, like one person a month, what if that would happen? I never thought that would actually be a thing, right? Um, but anyway, lockdown happens, shut down, no business from April to August. I opened in August, no income coming in. I sold a couple of weeks before I closed this week that I'm wearing. I sold a couple of weeks before I closed, but that money finished obviously didn't last those couple of months. May, June, April, May, June, July, August, 
five months, five-ish months, four and a half months, four months of not working, no income, no nothing. Yo! That's what I was like questioning my worth. But yo, cosing mumbani. August comes, I reopen, things are picking up. Like people were desperate to get their hair done. I'm like, wow, okay, things are picking up. I didn't expect this. I had a special running. September comes, things are like picking up more and more. How guys, September was probably the turning point of my business. Um all along my clients have been so gracious just to send referrals and I've been working I've been getting more clients through Instagram and through referrals, my clients referring people, which has been amazing. Um but September was a turning point because um, and I asked for permission to mention her, Usno Boy asked to book with me, right? And we've been following each other for some time because I'm a natural hair blogger and stuff like that. So I follow people of like mind and stuff, people who inspire me. Um she booked with me and because she has a large following, she tagged me in a couple of posts and from those posts, uh, as well as her mentioning my story on YouTube of how I started and all that stuff, literally brought an influx of clients um, to book with me because they saw my work and they were like, oh my gosh, I love your work. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't believe what people are booking with me. So I had to think, I need to be more serious now, more organized, more this, I need to plan because I had never imagined that it, it could get to a point where I was fully booked. Not to say that it's only Snow Buyo who got me there. Guys, all of my clients who were in my chair, have been in my chair, have been the reason why Brace My Buyo is the way it is. I, I even got an interview with Uno and uh, who works at Jumpstart or Home Channel to interview me in my business in the year before, October. And so you can see that there are countless opportunities that the Lord has provided for me to put me on platforms by, by amazing people who are just amazing, <laughs> my, like for lack of a better word, to, to put me out there. So that is why I am the way I am. I, I ended up being fully booked <laughs> from September to December, which is something I never imagined that I would break more than 30 people in a month because the highest was 30 in my mind. So you can imagine now in my mind, I'm thinking, you, me, all, out of all people, me, I, I didn't, I couldn't imagine that. I, I mean, I got it, I'm like, I'm good, but like, I didn't think, I didn't actually think it was going to happen. I thought it was going to happen, but I didn't think it was going to happen. So I had to now be consistent and push and, you know, braid, braid, braid. And that's where I am right now. Um, I'm currently braiding natural hair. Yeah. I have a passion for natural hair. And you make Afro wigs. I just love Afrocentricism, guys, because black people are beautiful, and God made us in His image, and we're just beautiful because we're made by the Lord Jesus. So, I just wanted to share the story because my desire for braids by Vue right now is not just braids. Even if it's not braiding forever, my desire is that natural hair care would be accessible across the board um, for all braiders. That all braiders would have a set standard of knowing how to take care of their hair and their clients hair at a basic minimum because we are born with this hair why must we now be asked to walk into a, walk into a salon and be asked to relax our hair because our hair is unmanageable no my principles for braiding is that I don't want it to be painful I don't want my, I want my clients to sleep at night safely and I want my clients to get moved I want my clients to leave my chair with having more knowledge about their hair and how they can take care of it and love their hair. And I also leave with knowledge from clients who know way more than me, which is amazing. So my passion really for Braids by Buyo is natural hair care should be part of the braiding journey and a set standard across the board so that any braider that you go to in South Africa, whether a Soweto or a Sentin or a... Tembisa or whatever knows how to take care of natural hair so that black women don't have the narrative of beauty is pain no guys we, we don't need to have that things are changing times are changing we need to love the hair that god has so graciously given us it's beautiful and braiding should be part of that we need to abolish unsafe braiding practices you know it starts off as little as taking yourself seriously as a braider you know loving your hair as a braider so that you can love your clients and have a relationship with their hair so it's 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 that's what it is for me 
I care about my clients here. Currently, I'm learning the most in this process. So I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who has formed part of the Braids by Buya journey. Whether you have sat in my chair, whether you've shared stories, posts, whether you've referred me, whether you've complimented me, whether you've taught me, whether you have bought a wig, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you. You're the reason why Braids by Buya is where it is and I will continue to try and do my best because I love touching black women's hair. It's a privilege. It is a huge privilege to be able to touch people's hair. Because you know not just anyone can touch our hair, because that's disrespectful. But I just want to say a big thank you. I appreciate you and I'm going to push for you because you're the reason I'm here. And I just want to give thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ for this business because he cares about my business. He cares about my livelihood and he cares about my life and my soul. Ultimately, it would be a disservice if I didn't tell you that it is God who has put me here. It is a blessing of Jesus Christ who first and foremost gave his life for me on the cross so that I could have life. Um, and by believing in him for the forgiveness of my sins, believing in his death and resurrection and for the forgiveness of my sins because he's the son of God, able to forgive me, able to heal me, redeem me and bring me and reconcile me to the living God through his death and resurrection. I have life. And because of that, all things flow. So it's, it's not just money or, or a business. It is life because it comes from God himself. So thank you. Um, thank you so much. Um, if you can take anything from this, don't give up, guys. I do not know what your process is. I feel like God always has a greater plan. Um, but he's not just here to make us like the rich or whatever or prosper. He's here to give us life and life abundantly that is only find, found in Jesus Christ, in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this and enjoy your evening. Goodbye.